All right, ladies and gentlemen, today uh, we're going to look at the uh, dilution uh, part of uh, some of our calculations that uh, we might be seeing. And with that, um, we've uh, been able to make and or create uh, concentrated solutions. Uh, but now we're going to look at um, how do we dilute them from a concentrated? Because sometimes it's easier to buy solutions um, at a stronger uh, concentration. And uh, therefore, uh, you then need to dilute it down uh, to uh, some of these other ones. So let's begin. So uh, you can dilute a con uh, more concentrated solution by uh, utilizing pipettes or other means. Uh, and so here in the picture, you can see that we are going, that they are taking a copper, it looks like a copper two uh, sulfate solution because it's blue. And they're going to dilute it down, uh, utilizing again, these volumetric flasks. Uh, and then you can see that the less concentrated or the diluted solution is the less, uh, less dark. One of the re wait times that I do this is when I buy, say, like hydrochloric acid, we, I buy it at a, in its concentrated form, so it's a 12 molar. And with that 12 molar solution, I can't give you 12 molar solution all the time. Um, sometimes we need to go to a 6 molar, sometimes we need to go to a 1 molar solution. And so what I have to do is very these very similar things where I have to uh, take the solution from its concentrated form and then dilute it down depending upon uh, what amount or what strength of hydrochloric acid I need for the lab or will be sufficient and safe for you to safely do the lab um, as we uh, look at that. There's a nice calculation, uh, this uh, nice calculation that we have here, uh, where we have some parts for the, as well, and the capital M's are for the molarity aspect of it. Um, the little or subscripted C's that we can see here, those are for the concentrated amounts. The diluted solutions are for um, that, uh, the diluted solutions, the little d's for the diluted solutions. And what we will be able to do is we'll be able to set up a, essentially uh, a proportion um, for us. Um, way, the way we, this is usually done is you actually might not even have to do as much converting into and out of, uh, liters as what, well, because of how the, uh, the labels will cancel each other out or become one depending on how you want to look at it um, but it, it, it will be very useful and so I would hopefully make sure uh, that you do write this down because it will be helpful uh, as we move forward uh, with that it would be something um, that is usually it's an equation and therefore would be written uh, usually on the board uh, for you in the classroom uh, when you take a test So let's try some out. And so we're asked to see how many milliliters of a three molar uh, sulfuric acid are needed to make 450 milliliters of a 0.1 molar uh, solution of sulfuric acid. And added in there at the end is how much water is also going to be needed. This is very common is usually you know how much of the diluted solution you actually need. Uh, then from there, you are going, okay, I need to do this lab, I need this much of a uh, solution, uh, and I will need it at this strength. I don't have that strength, I need to make it. And so this is very similar uh, type of calculation that uh, we would do with that. And so we set up our proportion uh, the same manner in that we have our molarity of our concentrated solution times the volume of our concentrated solution is equal to 
the molarity of our diluted solution times the volume of our diluted solution. Now I'm going to take and put these values in the uh, part here. And so uh, we will have our constant uh, molarity of our concentrated solution times the volume of our concentrated solution. That's what we're asked to find or what we're actually want to find in uh, this problem here. And then I'm going to have a, my concentration of 0.1 molar times the volume of 400, oh, nope, 450, not 55, milliliters with that. And so what we'll be able to do then is to take my 0.1 times 450, which would give us, if you know your math well, and that you'll have a new vol uh, volume or new uh, amounts there of 45, which will then be equal to the veloc uh, <laughs> velocity, <laughs> volume of the concentrated solution times your molarity, divide both sides by your molarity, uh, I'm not thinking of the answer already, and so you, we would divide by 3 uh, with that, and when we do that we find and see that our answer is 15 milliliters. Now that's 15 milliliters of my sulfuric acid to SO4. How much water do I actually need? Well, I, if I want a total volume of a solution to be 450, I need to subtract off that. Um, because if I just add 15 milliliters uh, to a volumetric flask or to an Erlenmeyer flask or whatever, I'm not going to have 450. I need to then increase the volume to 450, and that's where that difference lies. And so uh, kind of almost as a side equation, you'll see here, we'll then take that and put it as, and just subtract them. And for that, we will then find what my volume of water will be and hopefully you should be able to see and look at the value here and be able to maybe even do this in your head for the value of 435 milliliters. And that would be of H2O, uh, which is a very important part of it because if you don't add the right amount of water, um, then your concentration's actually messed up. And uh, going into the lab, uh, making some of those standard solutions um, would be very important, um, especially uh, as we continue on through and do some of the uh, titrations after we have done some of our dilutions. The next problem is a <clears throat> solving a little bit different in that we're asked to, if what is the actual uh, resulting solution? It's done the same way um, and so we have our 10 milliliters times our 10 molar solution which should be in a very strong concentrated solution of sodium hydroxide uh, to make that it would definitely give off a lot of heat is extremely exothermic as well and I will ultimately be looking for my molarity of my diluted solution with that. Here I can hopefully, maybe, you can or can't, uh, we'll look at and see that 10 times 10 is 100 and then you will have uh, and that will equal your 250 
and 50. Milliliters. And technically this is molars uh, times liters. We can get into that later. And solving for the molarity of the diluted solution. To get that by itself, I need to divide both sides by 250. And when we do that, we find that our solution ends up having a volume, or I'm sorry, a, a concentration of 0. 4 uh, molar, and that would be of a, a sodium hydroxide solution. A lot of times though, uh, for a sodium hydroxide solution, sometimes you'll find them in uh, large vats where we would make six, but sodium hydroxide is kind of finicky and it doesn't actually last all that long. Um, we have to keep them in usually uh, amber colored bottles so that they it doesn't, it's photogenically uh, deteriorates, which means the sun actually will deteriorate it down as well. And so uh, from here, we will look at doing some more uh, calculations, doing some stoichiometry stuff with uh, some of these and doing some titrations, uh, both in the lab and in notes.